purification of earth and humanity, natural catastrophes, mercy and judgment of God, revelations of Jesus Christ from 1884 to 1950. Natural Catastrophes Thus saith the Lord Humanity, if all the efforts you have dedicated to waging bloody wars had been used for humanitarian works, your existence would be filled with the blessings of the Father. But men have used the riches they have accumulated to sow destruction, pain, and death. This cannot be the true life, that which must be led by those who are brothers and sisters, the children of God. This form of existence is not in accord with the law I have written in your conscience. To make you understand the error in which you live, volcanoes shall erupt, fire shall emerge from the earth to exterminate the evil seed, the winds shall be unleashed, the earth shall tremble, and the waters shall ravage regions and entire nations. In this way, the elements will express their resentment of man. They have broken with him, because, one after another, man has been destroying the bonds of friendship and brotherhood that tie him to the nature that surrounds him. Many calamities will come upon mankind. There will be disturbances within nature. The elements will be unleashed. Fire will devastate entire regions. The waters of the rivers will be overflowing, and the seas will undergo changes. Regions will be buried beneath the waters, and new lands will appear. Many creatures will lose their lives and even the beings inferior to man will perish. The elements merely await the hour to unleash themselves upon the world, to cleanse and purify the earth. The more sinful and proud a nation, the more severe shall be my judgment of it. The heart of this humanity is hardened and deaf, it is necessary for it to empty the cup of bitterness before it will be able to hear the voice of the conscience, of the law, and of the divine justice, all for the sake of the salvation and eternal life of the Spirit, for that is what I seek. Noah's flood, which cleansed the earth of human impurities, and the fire that descended upon Sodom, you only know them as legends. But in this era, you will experience once more how humanity will be shaken as the earth trembles by the force of the wind, the water, and the fire. However, I shall send you another ark, my law, so that those who enter it may be saved. Not all of those who say, Father, Father, during the hour of affliction will love me. Rather, it is those who always practice my love towards their fellow men who shall be saved. A new flood will befall and cleanse this earth of human perversity. It will topple the false gods from their altars, destroy the foundation of arrogance and iniquity, stone after stone, and erase every false doctrine and absurd philosophy. But this flood shall not consist of merely water, as was the case with the previous flood. For now, the hand of man has unleashed all the elements, both seen and unseen, against himself. He dictates his own sentence, he punishes and judges himself. The realms of nature shall cry out for justice. And upon unleashing themselves, they will cause large portions of the earth to disappear, becoming part of the sea, and seas to vanish where new land arises.
Volcanoes will erupt to announce the time of judgment, and all of nature will move and be shaken. Pray, so you will behave like good disciples, for that will be the precise time in which the spiritual Trinitarian Marian doctrine shall spread within all hearts. Three quarters of the surface of the earth shall disappear, and only the last quarter shall remain as a refuge for those that survive the chaos. You will behold the fulfillment of many prophecies. Do not be mistaken, because before the closing of the sixth seal, great events shall take place. The heavenly bodies will show great signs, the nations of the earth will lament, and of this planet three quarters shall disappear, and only one quarter will remain, upon which the seed of the Holy Spirit will grow into new life. Humanity will begin a new existence united by a single doctrine, a single language, and a single bond of peace and brotherhood. I speak to you of the pain you deserve, which you have been accumulating, and which shall overflow when the fated hour comes. I would never offer such a cup to my children. But in my justice, I must permit you to gather the fruits of your evil, your arrogance, and your senselessness, so you might repent and return to me. Men have challenged my power and justice by profaning the temple of nature, in which all is harmony with their science, and their judgment shall be inexorable. The elements shall be unleashed, the cosmos shall move, and the earth tremble. There will be horror amongst men, and they will want to flee, but there will be nowhere to go. They will attempt to restrain the unchained forces, but will not be able to, for they will feel responsible. And repenting too late for their recklessness and imprudence, they shall seek death to escape just punishment. Oh, how much suffering could be avoided if men knew of their spiritual gifts. But they have preferred to remain blind or sleeping while they allow the times of great pain to inch ever closer. My doctrine shall enlighten you, so that you may free yourselves of the great suffering announced to humanity by the prophets of times past. Only through the betterment of your lives can you find the power or ability to save yourselves from the effects of the unchained elements. For it is not the weapons of faith and prayer alone that will give you victory over the vicissitudes and adversities of life. That faith and prayer must be accompanied by a life that is virtuous, pure, and good. Soon a time of great events shall begin for the world. The earth will tremble, and the sun will send down searing rays to scorch its surface. The continents, from one pole to the other, will be afflicted by pain. Every corner of the earth will be purified, and no creature will escape the hardship and atonement. But after this great chaos, the nations will recover their tranquility and the elements will calm down. After the stormy night of the world, the rainbow of peace shall appear. All will return to his laws, his order, and his harmony. Once more you will see the clean skies and the fertile fields. The waters and streams will regain their purity, and the sea will be gentle. There will be fruit on the trees, flowers on the prairies, and abundant harvests. And man, purified and healthy, will return to feeling worthy, finding prepared the road of his ascension and returning to me. All will be cleansed thoroughly, so they may be worthy of getting to experience the new era that approaches, 
for I must found the new humanity on firm ground. Loving justice and the mercy of God. The time approaches when the full weight of the judgment shall be felt around the world. All works, words, and thoughts shall be judged. All from the great of the earth who govern its peoples to the smallest and least known shall be weighed on the divine scale. But do not confuse justice with vengeance, nor restitution with punishment. For I merely permit you to gather and eat the fruits you have sown, so you may know by their taste and effect if they are healthy or harmful, and if you have sown a good or bad seed. The innocent blood spilled by human evil, the weeping and mourning of widows and orphans, the Perea who suffers hunger and misery, all cry out for justice, and my justice, perfect and loving, but inexorable, descends upon all. My justice will come upon every creature and touch every man, like that time when the angel of the Lord passed over Egypt, executing my judgment, and only those who had marked their doors with the blood of the Lamb were spared. Truly, I say to you, that all who stay vigilant and have faith in the word and the promises of the Redeemer during this time will be saved. The Divine Lamb was sacrificed to teach you to pray and fulfill the mission of your restitution with perfect love, because my blood, like a mantle of love, will protect you. However, he who does not stay vigilant, he who does not believe, or he who slanders, shall be afflicted so he will awaken from his lethargy. I will allow men to feel my divine presence as they cry out, Our Father, our Savior, come help us, for we are perishing. I will manifest my infinite mercy and prove my love for mankind once again. The routine of your life will be battered soon by the harsh winds. After that, however, the light of a star will shine within the infinite, whose glimmering gives peace, light and calm, which the incarnated spirit needs to contemplate eternity. The Effects of Judgment When it appears that all is over for man, that death has won and evil triumphed, from the darkness, the beings will emerge to the light. From death, they will arise to the true life. And from the abyss of evil, they shall rise up to fulfill the eternal law of God. Not all shall know the abyss. For just as some have attempted to stay away from the war of passions, ambitions, and hatred, and have lived outside of the new Sodom, others who have sinned much, will yet know to stop in time, and by their opportune repentance and complete regeneration, they will avoid many tears and much pain. Of the moral and material structure of this humanity, nothing shall remain, because for the new man to appear on this earth, it is necessary to erase all stains, to destroy all sin, and to leave only that which is of a good seed. The splendor of my presence and justice will be contemplated all over the globe. And before that light, all idols will fall, traditional routines will be forgotten, and fruitless rites will be abandoned. Only a single door will remain open for the salvation of men, that of spiritualization, and he who wishes to save himself will have to leave behind his pride, his false greatness, his low passions, and his selfishness. Incredibly bitter shall be the cup from which men must drink during the great battle. And yet, I tell you, happy shall be those who drink from that cup and depart from earth, purified 
For when they return to this world in new bodies, their message will be one of light, peace, and wisdom. The last whirlwinds and battles, with all their bitterness, are yet to arrive. For now, all the forces must still be agitated, and the atoms must begin to swirl around chaotically, so that, afterward, lethargy can set in, a fatigue, sadness, and weariness that has the appearance of death. That will be the hour when, in the renewed sublimity of the conscience, the vibrating echo of a trumpet will be heard, announcing from the beyond that the kingdom of life and peace will come to men of goodwill. After every echo, the dead in spirit will rise, weeping tears of repentance, and the father shall receive them as prodigal sons, worn out from the long journey and fatigued from the great struggle, ratifying their spirits by bestowing upon them the kiss of love. From that day forward, man shall abhor war, tear hatred and rancor from his heart, persecute sin, and begin a life of restoration and reconstruction. Many will feel inspired by a light they could never see before, and they will rise up to create a world of peace. This shall only be the beginning of the time of grace, the era of peace. The Stone Age is long past, the time of science will also pass, and then the era of the Spirit shall blossom among men. The source of all life will reveal great mysteries, so that men can construct a world that is strong in the signs of good, in justice, and in love.